road building and fisheries, you tend not to think of yourself as partners. Yet, if you get into most road crews, you've got fishermen. And if you get it down to that basic element, there's no reason you shouldn't partner up quite naturally. My name's Steve Glatt. I'm the Road and Bridge Director for Bonner County. Hi, my name's Ken Bowens with the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. I'm a mitigation staff biologist. The primary thing that I do is work with the Clark Fork Settlement Agreement. So, Trestle Creek is one of the major bull trout spawning streams to the Ponderé system. 10, 15 years ago, about half of the production of the whole Ponderé system came from Trestle Creek. Those numbers have been slowly trickling down a little bit. They're still significant, but over time, uh, we, we haven't been getting quite as many bull trout up into Trestle Creek as we used to. So I started thinking about why is that happening. One of the things that I noticed, uh, although there's a lot of main stem riffle habitat in Trestle Creek, one thing that we don't have is a lot of side channel slow water habitat. Uh, juvenile bull trout, specifically young of the year fish, generally like the, the real shallow nearshore water. Um, generally waters that are moving less than one foot per second. And uh, given that Trestle Creek's in a steep valley, we don't have a lot of that. That process was going through my head right about the same time that Bonner County was applying for a grant with Federal Highways to repave the road here. So we literally jumped in the truck when they were having a scoping meeting and went for a ride with them. What's really is remarkable is when you find a project that brings together trying to enhance, protect a fishery and trying to enhance and protect the road. It's been a great opportunity to work together with, with Fish and Game and with, with Federal Wildlife Services that a road enhancement project can also be a stream stabilization project and they can work well together. the things that's, that's kind of cool is we were able to get in on the front end of this project, which doesn't happen often. We then are part of the design team for their road work. So beyond what we're doing in stream, we also have some input on what they're going to do later when we come in. So we were able to put, put habitat into the project. We were able to move the creek away from the road. So when they come in and do their armoring, um, it won't impact the creek nearly as much as it would otherwise. The project was funded through Avista and the Clark Park Settlement Agreement. And then once we got the initial funding going, we hired RIPHAB, which is an engineering firm out of Boise, and Jean McFall's the primary engineer with that. She did the engineering on the job. Hi, my name is Jean McFall. I'm the hydraulic fisheries engineer working on the Trestle Creek project. And we designed this log jam in one of the steepest sections where it was up to 8% grade and the water was rushing down this boulder chute and heading straight towards a bend in Trestle Creek Road, um, causing all sorts of erosion, causing problems for the county. And what we ended up doing is upstream from there, creating this massive log jam using these incredible trees that Todd was able to fell and locate into place and construct a log jam. So it pushed all of that water up onto the floodplain, and in the end, uh, it, there was just water all over. I mean, water was flooding the whole floodplain, which is really exciting because that's what the juvenile bull trout need. Douglas Construction and Custom Cutting were the contractor on the job. Both did a phenomenal job, and it was a real success. You're working in the stream, you're working in the, in the riparian zone, which is awesome. And we both love fishing and hunting and the outdoors and preserving, you know, mm -hmm. for future generations. So one of the hardest things about a project like this is not necessarily actually doing the in-stream work, but getting ready to go. And it took about two years to get the funding in, in order and get, get the permitting done so we could actually go to work. When we started to go to work, you know, there's environmental monitoring that we have to do. Because when you're digging, you're stirring up the bottom and you're, you're, you're making the water a little bit muddy. You know, in, in, a, in a stream like this with Trestle Creek, literally within five or ten minutes after we, we do the work, the water's cleared up. The other thing we do is before we even start work, we go through with an electrofishing crew, remove as many of the fish as we can from the project reef so we don't directly impact those fish. So 
So one of the things, you know, as we've been working here this week, we've had several several residents and, and people stop by and, and look at it. And, you know, the, the first thing that they look at is they look at it and they're like, boy, that's messy. You know, from a fish perspective, messy is good. It creates the complexity and the things that, uh, the things that really, that really do create good fish habitat and help fish grow. Creating all of this complex, different habitat areas with grasses and trees and root wads, um, all of those roughness elements work to slow the water down, spread it out, create this huge increase of habitat. It's interesting because here we are, what, a week after we're done, and I'm just looking in the water next to me and I'm seeing juvenile fish swimming in the little pools that we've already created. We've got a, an overall positive thing going on.